being a Broadway performer is pretty cool. And a lot of hard work. But getting there is even harder. I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm Adrian Walker. Welcome to 32 Bar Cut. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Broadway Banter. On Broadway 32... Banter. <laughs> on 32 Bar Cut. 32 Bar Cut. I am Adrienne Walker. I'm Austin. Oh, right. And today we are going to talk about to the 10 things we can't stand. The 10 people we hate at the audition waiting room. Let me tell you, I'm sick of these people. You know, I don't audition that much. You audition all the time. I do. I, hate is a strong word. Hate's a strong word but and I'm going to use it. In the audition scenario, my nerves are so heightened that I do sometimes feel something akin to hate when um, I'm around hate. one of these top 10 types of auditioners, yeah. I hate it. It's got to stop. We've got to curb it, okay? Yeah. So we're going to talk about it today. We're going to talk about it today, and we've given them fun names to help you remember. And also, I have been one of these folks before. I've been one, there too. One, two, three of these folks. So let us know if you have been one of these. We know you've one been one of these. <laughs> We know you have, because I've been one, she's been one, but we need to stop it. Okay, so we're going to stop it. It just takes a level of self-awareness. Self-awareness. But before we do, look, we know you want to support 32 Bar Cut. People ask us all the time, how can we support 32 Bar Cut? The answer is simple, my friends. Look, you can get this cool mug. I'm drinking coffee out of this His mug. mug is pretty cool, but mine is a lot cooler because it says, making my own opportunities which is something we talk about on this right. channel. Also, you can hop onto our store at 32barcut.com slash shop. shop. Yeah. yeah. Or go to the homepage. And You'll you see can it. get, uh, well, we just ended our sweatshirt sale. We so ended the sweatshirt sale. You missed that. But, but if you're a subscriber, you get 10% off. Yeah, you of get everything. 10% so off. So subscribe on the website, my friends. We appreciate you subscribing on YouTube. Yeah. And then go to the website. Subscribe Actually, the before we get into this, hit that like button. Uh, hit that notifications button. Um, hit that subscribe button, and uh, it's all free. stick around to the end so that we can tell you about all these ten things. Okay, so the first person we hate in the audition waiting room. This is before you go into the audition. The first person we hate is the socialite. The socialite. The socialite, and you know who I'm talking about. This person knows everyone they know every single person coming in and out the door and they gotta get up and they gotta say hello and they gotta be like ah, i haven't seen you in so long how are you what are you up to and we all know that the what are you up to question is like what show are you in what are you doing how do we compete with each other in this way no one wants to deal with the socialite in an audition scenario don't be the socialite. Don't be it. It's okay to say hello to your friends, but you can do it in a way that doesn't bring attention to yourself to the entire room and inside the casting room. Sometimes I'm playing the piano, I hear, well, what in the hell is going on out there? And it's like a big ruckus, everyone's like, that's gotta stop. Just keep it, just keep it small. People are trying to get, they're trying to get in the zone for their audition. There's yeah. no need to be, and like you said, it's almost like, I have been in The Lion King. I've been in Hamilton. I've been in Wicked. I've been in this and that and that. And then you, all of a sudden you got the list of your resume. Oh, out well, there then, the and then everyone else is intimidated because, you know, uh, folks in the audition room run the gamut. It might be your first Broadway audition. It might be your 20th Broadway audition. But do you really want to hear this one actor come in and rattle off their resume before you go into an audition? Do you want to hear about the readings and the workshops they're doing and how busy they are and how they're juggling this concert and this cabaret and Studio 54? No. 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 And it's weird that we have that inkling inside of us that wants to be like, you know, like I have to say, you know, what I've been doing. It's and what very, I'm... I don't know if it's actor culture, but for me, if it feels, it, it could be performer culture. I don't know, but I have been in so many situations with my actor friends who I love dearly. And when they say, how are you doing? What are you up to? It always means that. And that's not even what we're talking about. We're talking about the social life. So, don't be the socialite in the audition room. Top of the list, can't stand it, sets the wrong tone. Don't be the socialite. Okay, number two person we hate in the audition waiting room is... You take it. You're supposed to read who the people are. 
It's right there. Let me tell you who the second person we hate is. It's the Hummer. The singer, the singer Hummer. Practicing the, pra the music. The let me hum it. Let me put Hold it on, in my headphones. Hold on, let me give an example. I'm like looking for my AirPods right now. It's really more like, here's the book. Here's the sheet music. It's this. It's this. I've got the headphones in. I'm like... Meanwhile, I'm if you don't know the song yet, there's no amount of work that you are going to do in this audition room that you're going to lock in all those notes. And nobody else is impressed, okay? I don't know if the point is to try to be like, I'm a good singer, let me show off. I don't think We're it is. We're not impressed by your humming. I want to give people the benefit of the doubt that they're not doing that. I really do think that people get so nervous that they're like, okay, let me focus, let me concentrate my last little bit of energy on this song I had to learn for this audition. But you'd be much better off listening to something that gets you in the mood for the audition and not and not humming your life away and disrupting the audition space. Yes, so don't be the hummer. Don't be the singer, okay? Do it in private, yeah. okay? Go down to the alley and do it somewhere like away from the other actors, but don't be the hummer and the singer. Yeah. Let me tell you about the number three. The third, I'll do number three. The third person we hate in the audition waiting room. I'll do number three because this person might be my least, least, least favorite. Yeah. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot on this list, but this person, the exhibitionist Ooh. actor, Ooh. this is the actor mm. that needs to do the whole scene in their seat. They may stand up. They may do some mouth stretches. Are you ready? Did you forget how to talk today? Do you need to remind your voice how to speak? I don't think all these things need to happen. It is so frustrating. It is very frustrating because we're all in the same place. We're all trying to prepare. And it's just about this person. It's just a little extra. It's, extra. it's about all of the energy they're getting sucked towards up. me. You know, I need everyone to see me. Moving, they're acting. You know, it is just a whole show mm. happening over there. We didn't we didn't pay for your one act play. Nobody paid okay. you. Nobody bought a ticket. That's right. So just keep it down. Keep, keep it, it down. up here in the mental, right? You can do all that stuff you were thinking about doing outwardly. Yeah. You can do it all up here in the mind. Actually, you can do it on the train ride there. You hey. can do it on the train. Because on the train. there are so many crazy people on the train. Showtime. Hey, you can be your own showtime. Mm -hmm. You want to get all that out? Get it out on the MTA or the mm -hmm. CTA mm -hmm. or the BART or whatever you're taking. The MARTA. Yeah. All right. Okay. Get it out on the train. Don't. Don't bring it into the audition. Let me tell you about the number four person What's I number hate. Four? Who's number four? The number four person I hate is the stretcher. Ooh. You know what? I think the stretcher might be tied with the exhibitionist. Yeah, the stretcher. And we're not talking about what the people that just stretch, you know, casually. Yeah, I'm not we talking have about a nice dance little call. shoulder. If you have roll. a dance call, you got to stretch. We know. Okay. Yeah, we're yeah. not talking about you. Yeah. We're talking about the stretcher. The one who's in the middle of the six foot hallway in the whole thing, you gotta step over them. Yeah. To get where you're going. Yeah. You gotta step over. Taking up space. And they're like, you know, sitting here with their headphones mm -hmm. on, you know, looking at their sides. They're basically a combination of of quite a few of these people yeah. we've already discussed, mm -hmm. you know. So they're sitting there stretching, mm -hmm. humming, mm -hmm. going over lines, mm -hmm. and saying hello to people while they walk by. And they're in the way, in the and way. they're frustrating and annoying. Mm -hmm. Don't be the stretcher. Mm -hmm. Now, at the dance call, of course, you got to stretch. You got to, you know, warm up those muscles. We know. At Pearl Studios, it's yeah. tight over there. It's okay, tight. Ripley Greer, it's tight. Mm -hmm. When you got 80 people at a dance call, they're all in the hallways. You got to stretch. We know. Okay, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the individual stretcher who wants to take up the whole space. They exist. They you exist. You know who you are. Don't do it. It's not nice. Don't don't be that person. Okay, let me tell you about who the number five person we hate. Okay, who's the number five person? You want to tell them? Yeah, I want to okay. tell them. Tell number me. five is 
the needy one. Mm. This person forgot everything. They don't have anything. They oh. don't have their size. They don't know where you what what show they're in for. They mm. don't know what's going on. They're asking everybody questions. They're asking how did it go? What went on? What did they want? Don't don't. What are you doing? This is a an mm. audition can and should be, in my opinion, an individualized mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. Can you connect with people? Yeah, especially at a dance call or moments where they're calling actors in to read with each other. Yeah, sure, connect, fine, be cordial. But this is still an interview process. It's, it's every person for themselves, okay? So you can't walk into this audition asking people for sides and asking people for what did they see and what did they do. Can I use your stapler? No. Um, Can I use your water bottle? No. 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 Do you have the sides? No. Okay. I, th I think the casting director has You got to bring all that stuff. Be prepared. Yeah. Okay. Don't be asking the moderator. What do you call the people, the representatives? A monitor. The mo monitor. Yeah. Don't ask the monitor for every little thing, a paperclip, a stapler, or this or that. It's okay to come to Ripley Greer and use their station. They have yeah. a station, okay? They have a station with the, the paper, the tape, and the blah, blah, blah. Use that, okay? But don't be bothering use it everybody. quietly, you know? There's, there's, there's such a grace in getting what you need in a quiet way. And here's the pro tip. Come to the audition prepared, yeah. okay? Don't wait until you get to Ripley. Don't go to... Be the person we've been there. We've all been I've there. I've done it. Person running to Kinko's, whoo, to FedEx. To get your bed shot and your Then you run down the street to the office depot when you're trying to get yeah. the stapler and the stick. Because then honestly, I, no casting director, no artistic director, whoever is in char charge of running the audition, they don't want to hear that you were late because you had to get your head shot. No. That's not... That's not a real legitimate That's excuse. Not a Let's be prepared. That's a, you weren't ready and you're late and you're you're fishing for reasons. That's right. Let's be prepared. And I say this from experience. I'm you know like we can all do better. Let's yeah. be prepared. Let's be professional. We can do it. Okay. Don't be needy. Don't be needy. Don't be needy. Okay. The next Who's the next? number number six, six. Number six. We've already done five. Can you believe that? Now that we're halfway through, have you subscribed? We do a ton of cool videos. We do a bunch of stuff. It's all for free. Yeah. We're just telling you our experiences, our uh, career, you know, what we know. And we want you to uh, be entertained and to, and to learn something. Some, yeah. And we also have a really cool show every Thursday at 1 p.m. called 32 Bar Cut the Show, where we interview our friends. Austin is the producer. He's sitting behind the computer all the time, so you'll never see him. But I sit down with my friends from Broadway and beyond, and we talk about theater for an hour. Uh, anyway, there is a little something right here on you. Let's so get it Let me on. get that off. Okay, number six, the arch enemy. And I say that with a grain of salt, or we say that with a grain of salt, because yeah, I, I would hope that none of us are like real enemies. But you know but what I'm talking about. This person is the person you see at every audition you go to. You two are always called for the same thing. And every time you see them, you're like, here we go. It's either me or the you. That's right. It's me and Hugh Jackman, okay? Every time <laughs> I'm at an audition, Hugh walks in and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna They're gonna it. give it to Hugh. I'm not gonna get it. Yeah. That's me. Who's yours? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't have one. No, I didn't say, I didn't mean that. It's she's like, not, I'm not going to like say, she's not oh, on last. Well, I just by the you, way. I just put Hugh Jackman on last. Yeah, you just, well. Hugh, I'm tired now of he you knows. coming for my roles. Now he okay? knows. Taking all yeah. my roles. I was supposed to do the music man. And then Hugh came in the room. Oh my gosh. Can you believe he that? He ruined it for you. Yeah, I know. That Hugh. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so this is the person that's most likely to throw you off your game, right? You see them and instead of concentrating on your audition, now you're concentrating on the mm -hmm. fact that they're in the room and that, and now instead of competing against yourself, because really that's who you should be competing against. It's making yourself better and better and better. Now you're thinking about, okay, how can I be better than this person that I'm always up against. This is not a competition, my friends. We're not competing. This is like golf, okay, in the sports world. Yeah, I in like golf. that. Yeah, all right, we're just a bunch of golfers. It's not an offensive you're just sport. Doing, you're, you're just doing your game. Yeah. You're doing what you do. It's not about a competition. It's not that somebody's better or worse than you. We're just doing our thing. You're only responsible for your own game. Yeah. Okay. That's true. You know who's never the number seven person I can't stand? Who's that? 
the casting director's best friend. Ooh, okay, you know who you are. You know who you are. You and the casting director are mm, besties, mm, and you will mm. let everyone know it every time you walk into the audition room. You come in, the casting director comes out the door to grab the next person. They see you, you see them, and you run to each other and embrace and say, hello, how you doing? And guess what? Everyone else in the audition waiting room doesn't know what to do because they just realize that you have a personal relationship with the casting director and their chances have gone from, you know, middling to completely depleted. Mm -hmm. oh, that's the worst. I got to tell you, it, it, it sucks when you don't know the casting director and you think everyone else does. But then, I mean, it, it feels kind of good when you do know the casting director and they give you a smile. What do you do? Oh, I know. It's tough. What it's do you tough. do? It's tough, but it's just about the way, and like most race. of these things, have and actually race. all of these probably have this in common. It's the way you react in these situations. Yeah. yeah. Are you then taking that energy or someone saying they're hoping hello to you? Are you then making it about you and like telling everybody else that, hey, how's it going? Oh, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. You know, blah, blah. or you just say, hey, how you doing? And then you're back to your work. Yeah. I think too, it's such a weird environment that you're not always aware of yourself and your body and what you're doing and, mm -hmm. and what energy you're giving off. And so, yeah, if a casting director came up to me and was happy to see me, I'd be happy to see them. It would help me ease some of my nerves. But I think it is good to be conscious that it may also affect other people and it, you know, karma it could happen to you at your next audition in a different mm -hmm. casting office so that's right it's and it's also on a, a good casting director will make everybody feel special mm -hmm. so it's really on the casting directors too which i know we i've worked with great casting directors yeah. who every time there's somebody enters the uh waiting they room they're like hey good how to you doing? see you again yeah and, and there's nothing better than that that's right that you don't you don't feel like just a nameless actor you feel like oh they remember me they know me you know good. who the number eight person is i hate in the waiting room who the messy person. Tell me about this messy person. Let me tell you the messy person. The person who has a like a simple bag. I mean, these bags are small. It's like a little handbag, and all of a sudden, it's turned into the Mary Poppins. You know, well, where yeah. everything's coming out of the bag. You got the stuff. You got the chapstick. You got the vocal drops. You've got the sides. You've got eighty-five sides everywhere. You got the water bottle. You got the. Can you put it all back in the bag, please? I don't make a mess. This isn't your house. Let me okay, tell you about this please. audition I went to. What? I went to this TV film audition and the casting office was quite small. A lot of the TV film audition, uh, TV casting offices in New York are small. Yeah, that's like, small. Like smaller than, as small as a bedroom, basically. Mm -hmm. And so we're in this casting office and it's filled because they're running behind. And mind you, I was only in there to say three lines, you know? Mm -hmm. And all the seats were taken up, except for someone's backpack mm -hmm. and a jacket, oh, this is right? Mm -hmm. And there were people standing and I'm just looking at this backpack and this jacket and I'm like, oh, this person must be in the room. And they, in the room filled up while they were in there. And, you know, I'm giving them all kinds of allowances. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, it was this guy still there that had spread out and did not care that there were people standing, that the room was packed. Mm -hmm. He was just completely spread out, went into his audition. I remember someone saying, excuse me, can I sit here? I did, I'm not the one. Mm -mm. I moved his jacket, handed it to him, and sat down. Mm -hmm. I, your jacket is not going to get a seat when I don't. Anyway, the messy one. The messy one. Don't be the messy one. Be self-aware. And basically, person. all we're talking about today is self-awareness. Is that yeah. people have a little more self-awareness and kindness about themselves. And for the people experiencing the same thing as them, we're all in the same place together. None of us is better than the other. Uh, it would make auditioning a lot better. Well, auditions are so tough. They're very difficult. You're doing something that is scary, that yeah. is nerve wracking, that you have minimal time to prepare in a lot of cases. You're putting yourself out there in front of people. It's a tough thing. We don't need all of this stuff, all of this like. Yeah, and what is that about? That spreading out of stuff? Is it, it's, it's kind of like marking your territory. Yeah, it's like, like puffing out the I chest. Am, yeah, puffing out the important. chest. Like we saw that bird in the park today. Yeah, they so. were fighting and the bird puffed up like, and the other one was like, okay. You know, like 
Let's not do that to each other. Let's stop all that. Um, number nine. The number nine person we hit in the waiting room for an audition. The is, snob. Oh, the snob. The snob. And, you know, the snob is fill in the blank. Anyone that makes you feel like you are less of a human being than they are. Anyone that has that elevated air quality to them. And I'm not talking about someone that mm. you respect and admire and you're excited to be in the same space with them. Not that kind of energy. I'm talking, they, they could be they could be someone that has no credits, but they have an air of snobbery. And um, mm -hmm. there's no, we don't have any room for that. We don't have room we for that. Not just space. For that. Guess what? We are all in the same room together. No matter who's done what or where or how or how many times, we are all, we just all happen to be in the same room together. That's right. And we're all blessed to be doing this career. Okay. Even if we haven't made it yet, that we're even trying to do this career. You know, we're yeah. all sitting here trying to do some artistic expression. It is artistic There's expression. There's no need to be a snob about it or to be like, I am so accomplished or I have done all these things. Because mm -hmm. let, let's just put it, let's be, let's be real about it. You're not Tom Hanks. Okay. You're not Meryl Streep. And Tom Hanks is nice. You're not Denzel Washington. Okay. Yeah. You're not Kerry Washington. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. You're not those people, okay? So let's not act like it. And what I have come to find out- By the way, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> I just okay. thought, I just had that thought like instantly. What? I met Tom Hanks and yeah, guess what? Yeah, that's what I said and Tom Hanks is nice. You told me he was nice. The nicest man on the planet, okay? We're in the same mind because that's basically what I was gonna yeah. say is that you meet these people who have achieved so much in their careers and they happen to be really kind and really great and gracious and humble people. So I don't know where we get it in our heads that you have to be so elevated to be successful, but it's not true. No. It's, it's just not true. So don't be a snob. <laughs> we, we don't like the snobs. We've got one more person that we can't stand in the audition waiting room. But before uh, we do, I know we're a broken record, but have you subscribed? Did you have hit, you that, hit like that like button? button? Have you hit that notification? Because if you don't hit the notification, you won't you won't know when the videos are out. And, and if you like Austin's t-shirt, which he designed, I'm on Vocal Rest, inspired by me because I'm always on Vocal Rest. It is up on our shop and you can get it in different ways. You can get it on a mug. You can get it on a water bottle. Yeah. You can get it on a t-shirt. Yeah. yeah, check it out, check it out. All right, so the last, the last one. Do you want to do it? Can't stand. No, it's all yours. Okay. The last person that we can't stand. The last person we can't stand in the audition rating room is the informant. Yes. You might have an idea of who this person is. <laughs> They're actually trying to be helpful. I don't think that the informant wants to mess anyone up. I mm -hmm. actually think the informant wants everyone to have a great audition. Mm -hmm. But in doing so, they don't realize that they are just setting people up. Yeah, they're setting them up. They're setting them up to fail. The informant is the person that leaves their audition and makes it their business to tell you how it went. Mm -hmm. Oh, the people behind the table are so nice. Oh, everything's so great. Oh, they only have you do scene one. You don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. You do not know what they're going to have me do. You only know what you did and what they had you do. <laughs> it's so just such a good point. leave your audition and say, break a leg if you feel like talking to somebody mm -hmm. and leave and, and leave, leave, leave. Don't dawdle. There's no room in these audition rooms anyway. It's such a great point because I, I was actually laughing because I was thinking too of like accompanists. Like I know that <laughs> as an accompanist, there are times when an actor will enter the room and I just crush it. Okay. It was like, we've been performing together for years. I never know. And just crush it. They leave the room and to the next person, I'm, you know, there's always this thing with the companies where they say the accompanist is good or the yeah, accompanist is terrible that's or great. the accompanist sucks. And Don't like, do that. I know you do that. And it's a thing we do. Oh, we know. But let me tell you, then the next person comes in and they've got something. Their music looks 
we're going to talk about this in a video, but janky. It's like not even music. It's been photocopied and somehow it's green. All like audition secret. books are not created. I can't people. see it. I've never heard of this song. I don't know what this is. I play and it's absolute garbage. I feel bad for them that I can't perform this, whatever this is. And they're looking at me like, that person told me you were great. Yeah. I can just feel it. Yeah. I can tell. Okay. And they're just like, they get the, it's the way you get your book back. Yeah. That's what, when they hand me their book and sometimes they just don't make eye contact and they just kind of like snatch. Yeah. And I'm like, look, I just want to be like, I'm so sorry, but your music is, I mean, oh, it's, <laughs> be your, your music is terrible. <laughs> okay. So don't be the informant. Don't be the informant. And this is our last one because honestly, it comes from a good place. I know it comes from a good place, but it actually is not helpful. <laughs> It's not, helpful. it's not helpful. It's not helpful. You do not need to inform anyone on how well or poorly or anything that went on in that room went. No. So those are our 10 people we hate in the audition <laughs> waiting room. Okay. Have you ever been one of these people? I have. <laughs> so let us know down below if you've experienced one of these 10 or if you have been one of these 10. And we will see you guys next time on Broadway Banter. Yeah.